Hello there. So I very recently did a video on this uh, laminated ITA kit. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. There's uh, there are a few little qualms I had with the uh, build, but again, this was a uh, pre-production sample, uh, and some of the things were going to be a little bit different with the retail kit. Um, in fact, one of the issues I had with this thing when it first arrived was that the uh, ribbon adapter for the LCD to connect it to the Game Boy, that part was broken, and so I had to swap it out. Uh, but long story short, while I uh, was trying to gather supplies for this thing, I had this Game Boy open, and I was looking at the ribbon cable in this because, you know, these are both ITA kits, I figured, hey, I can pull the ribbon out of this and use it in here if need be. Uh, but turns out I had another ribbon cable that was perfectly compatible, so I used that instead uh, and then just reassembled this thing. Uh, lo and behold, upon reassembly, there was a loud crack. I just hoped it was things slotting into place as I uh, slid the rear housing on. Unfortunately, that was not the case. And I cracked the screen. So if you look closely, there is a nice crack, a fracture going all the way from this edge all the way down to the bottom right about here-ish. And because of those, because of that crack, pump the game out, you can see it's developed quite a few black lines and, you know, the crack itself visible. Um, so what I want to do today, I want to pull this thing apart on camera and see specifically what I did wrong uh, so that hopefully um, I can, and maybe you can too, learn from my mistakes and not do stuff like this going forward. Uh, but I don't know, maybe it was just a freak, freak opportunity, freak chance, and maybe we won't learn anything. I think that's what we want. As it turns out, I had this thing apart for um, no real reason, and then putting it back together, I ruined it. Uh, thankfully, the screens for these things are like stupid cheap. In fact, I think that is one of the main reasons why Funny Playing was so drawn to the idea in the first place. Uh, cause this is, this is an ITA kit, like that laminated one. Uh, I did a video on this thing a little while back and, uh, it was the first retail ITA kit I've done, even though I've done three videos on them so far, two of them have been with, uh, samples. Um, I don't know. I, I really like the kit and I'm surprised it's not as popular as I thought it would be. Um... I don't know, I, I expected more people to to really latch on to these kits because there are a lot of people in my videos uh, mentioning that they want they want that pixel grid, they want the uh, they want the quote unquote scan lines, even though Game Boys have never had scan lines, that's a CRT thing. Um, and quite frankly, it's just a really inexpensive kit. Pretty good performance, does a lot of things that people are asking for, yet people still don't seem to like these kits. And I, I don't know what's going on, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get this unplugged. So if we look at where this thing cracked, it would have started from the right side, which almost makes me wonder if my mod in here maybe did that. but. I don't see any pinch points. I don't see where it could have even contacted the screen. I honestly don't know. Can we pull this thing out? I'm not too concerned about ruining it because it kind of already is. And unfortunately the LCD is coming apart on me. Oh, I should probably be using heat for this. That might make my life easier. I might be able to reuse the adhesive even. That would be convenient, wouldn't it? Mm, 
I'm going to ruin that top bit of adhesive. Oh, no. I got lucky. Oh, I totally ruined this thing pulling it out, though. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's that big splotch in the middle now. That's whatever. I kind of expected that. But the crack would have started here, and it looks like it extended all the way down here. So actually, I thought it started here, but it might have actually started here. Uh, if I look at this real closely, I can see there are multiple spider webs off of this edge. Let's see if I can try and catch the light just right. No, that's not going to happen. Anyway, you'll just have to take my word for it. There is a spiderweb crack starting right here and then a single crack that goes all the way across and ends right here. So I'm thinking my problem actually started right here and just so happened to go all the way across the screen instead of down and off to the side. So maybe it was a problem. Uh, some pressure got applied right here and then the whole screen maybe got tilted downward? I'm not sure. But if we put that right here and line it up, I think I can see what happened. And chances are the um, the ribbon cable just got caught by the speaker. That is unfortunate. I, I think that's the issue. Don't quote me. But we're going to try fixing this anyhow. Uh, next problem to tackle is that the, uh, I'm going to set this aside so I hopefully don't have to clean it. Uh, next problem to tackle is that this ribbon is bonded to this LCD. Uh, the easy solution here is just going to be to peel off this shielding since this LCD is already totally busted. Uh, I can just peel the shielding off and then peel the ribbon off that because this will flex, but I'm going to use a little bit of hot air along the back of this thing to weaken up the adhesive. I'll hold it in my hand. If it gets too hot, then, uh, well, I'll drop it, but it shouldn't get to that point. <laughs> so I've already scraped one of these ribbons off, so I know there's just a line of adhesive along this side, so I'm not going to try hitting up the whole thing. All right, that seems plenty warm. Oops. Yeah, I keep my hot glue next to my heat gun. Deal with it. Hopefully this thing can flex a little bit without being totally ruined. Ta-da! That's it. And I can even reuse this if I want. And tonight's donor is another ITA that I've literally already installed. You may recognize this one as the uh, as the sample I did. Um, hopefully, I can get this out without totally destroying it. I think I should use some heat here too. Did this install back before I realized you could uh, adjust the position of the screen after the fact, uh, but also back before they made shells for these things. I don't recommend uh, cutting up an OEM shell to shove one of these things in there. There's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of trimming necessary to do that. Especially when they make shells that you just drop in. That's probably hot enough, hopefully. And this thing does not have a glass lens on it, so maybe it'll be a little bit more forgiving if I get the old twist and pop. Just try peeling the shell off the screen. 
I don't remember what adhesive I used on this, but if it was that 300 LSE, then I'm gonna need another screen. <laughs> I think I used 300 LSE on this, because of course I did. Uh, but thankfully I only did it across the top and bottom, oof, if I'd done the whole thing, I'd be in a bad situation. Almost there, nice, looks intact, so I think we're good. Surprisingly dirty along the edges. I don't know what it did. Oh shoot. I forgot that was there already. Oh, and we certainly do not need to glue the uh, backlight ribbon to this thing. I'm just doing it to hopefully make my life interesting. Interesting. Sorry, I was reading a comment. Hopefully to make my life easy. interesting that funny playing will plug this stuff in for you but they don't trim these little tabs off the screen they require it but they don't do it for you another thing I missed from the install that would have made my life easier Unfortunately, the screen is kind of marked up near the edges. Had I realized that, I probably wouldn't have picked it, but also in theory it doesn't matter, because we won't see these, these edges. I don't know. Clean it anyway. So you can't really take it apart once it's together. Dust, I see. <sighs> hmm, I better get, get canned air for this. Hang on. All right, maybe not. It's totally out. Oh well. I'll have to get more. Ooh, could have also been that that caused the crack. Random shard of plastic, not where it's supposed to be. good. Let's try it again. Alright, 
right, and so my theory was that uh, the speaker wasn't seated properly and it was pushing down on this ribbon cable down here and so that when I screwed the board in, well, it caused the screen to flex. But, so I'm going to try slipping that speaker in, make sure it's underneath, and then we seat everything. Notice the B button didn't quite feel right either, uh, but so far so good. Oh, and B button feels a lot better. I think we're good to go. I should have tested that screen before installing it. That would have been smart. I mean, I know the screen worked, duh, past tense, but I've also had that Game Boy apart for a very long time. Um, I don't know when that original ITA video went up, but I took apart the Game Boy the same night I filmed it. So, oh, hang on, one more step. Make sure the touch sensor is stuck down. There we go. As usual, since we're just threading into plastic, it doesn't need to be insanely tight. Bring it all the way down and then back up an eighth a turn, just to make sure that we don't get any cracked screw posts. And if all went well, we're good to go. Let's find out. Hey! The alignment looks a little bit off. I mean, certainly close enough, but it could be better. I think since I swapped the screen out, I have to calibrate this now though. I think that is the wrong flash cart, but let's find out. Yeah, it is. Oh, also I already have a sticker on this, so it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Unless I peel that off and I kinda don't want to. Let's see if it even needs a calibration before going further. Where is my flash cart? So we use the AGS Aging ROM. Uh, I can't provide it because it's from Nintendo, but if you search it, I'm sure you'll find it. 
we go into the test menu and flicker adjuster and pull up this test pattern and if you see it flickering it means your screen needs calibration and mine is flickering I don't know what if anything the camera is picking up but a little bit of calibration is necessary so I guess let's go ahead and do that So the easy way to do this is to go through the sticker, but I kind of like that sticker and it's never really the same if you have to peel it up. So we'll just pull the back off, probably be easier. Now we need, oops, a way to power this. I am going to use my power supply because I can. And where it is, there it is. Just stick that on there and adjust it until the flicker goes away. See if it's really out of calibration it gets real bad. That looks good. Oh, nope, a little bit more. There we go. That's it, easy peasy. Unfortunately, it is an extra step required that a lot of other IPS kits don't need. In fact, I think this is the only IPS kit that need, uh, excuse me, I'm calling it an IPS kit, but this isn't actually an IPS screen. It's just regular TFT, or uh, Twisted Pneumatic, uh, TN. All of the screens in these things are TFT, regardless of backlight or not. Thin film transistor. But my understanding is uh, funny playing designed this kit to use the OEM voltage regulators on board uh, instead of putting additional voltage regulators on the kit because A, the Game Boy is already generating the power, um, might as well use it, but B, it's more efficient because the Game Boy is already generating the power, uh, but also it's cheaper because it's fewer parts needed, so I mean I'm into it. This is one of the least expensive backlight kits and one of the um, best performing in my opinion. I personally prefer the look of the uh, like linear scaling on the IPS kits but I mean if you want if you want something that's more original, I guess, but still actually backlit. 
There you go. That's it. There we go. I don't know, I think maybe the LCD is crooked. I don't know what to do about that, but it's working. Didn't crack, looks good. And unfortunately, all that lesson cost me was a, was a screen. Um, I mean, fortunately, all it cost me was a screen, but unfortunately, I broke a screen in the process. Uh, but everything should be working. Where's my touch sensor? Unfortunately, it got moved, and it's not against the edge of the shell anymore, so it's not working, but I don't much care for touch sensors, especially since I already have button controls anyway. So, it's all right in my book. All right, so there we go. Just be cognizant of where that speaker is. Uh, it has to be underneath the ribbon cable, not on top of it. Uh, at least that's my working theory on this. I uh, I posted on Twitter uh, when I broke this thing. I, I just threw a, um, threw a picture up there and said, whoops. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I got a few replies back from people saying that they had done the same thing and they wanted to know what I did uh, so that going forward, you know, they, they know what they did. And, they can prevent that because apparently the damage that I had caused this LCD was pretty similar to some stuff that other people had seen and well I figure we might as well do a post-mortem on screen and uh, you know if there's if there's a lesson to be learned then you know I'll go ahead and upload this video and I think I think I found that out um, so point being what I'm trying to say is um, let me know your thoughts. Do you think my analysis of this situation is correct? Um, do you have a different analysis of the situation? Have you done this to your Game Boy, you know, on, on purpose or by accident, either way, whatever? Um, you know, more information is more better on this. I really like this kit and I really want it to succeed. And... Um, Let's, let's be honest, the documentation from these kit makers sometimes is uh, terrible. So I like to provide as much documentation as I can, but a lot of the time that means I'm personally discovering um, caveats, quirks, features, whatever. I don't like that, but that's, that's the way this game is played, I guess. Uh, but anyway, ramble. Ramble, ramble, ramble. I can go on all day, but I'll try not to. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I've got mine fixed at least. Uh, if you guys... If this happens to you, um, this is just the bottom screen out of a DSi. You can buy a DSi cheap and, and shuck the screen out of it, but a bare LCD itself will be very cheap, uh, assuming you can still get them. I was told that... Um, Funny Playing bought up basically all of the stock on these when right before they started making these kits. So maybe they're not that easy to get anymore. And if so, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know that there's much that can be done about that. But I'm sure there are still some, some supplies out there, uh, even if they have to be shucked out of a DSi. But realistically, junk DSi's are really cheap. And since this is the bottom screen out of a DSi, there's going to be that touch digitizer over it anyway. So if you decide to shuck one of these for yourself, um, you know, once you peel the digitizer off, you've got a pristine, nice, shiny LCD you don't have to worry about. So I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. Only problem is I've seen quite a few DSIs with water damage or like yellowed screens. Oh, look at that. It's the reflector. So the backlight is along the bottom. Interesting. I was curious about that. On uh, older DS screens, it was along the side instead. But not that that matters. Anyway. 
I'm gonna set this back together and probably just chuck it because I don't know what use anyone would have for a busted LCD. This thing can flex surprisingly far before it breaks. <laughs> I haven't cracked it again. Just the initial, oh, there it goes. But you see, that's, that's where I applied the pressure and then it spiderwebbed out from there. And since there was a spiderweb right here and it's right at the ribbon, I don't know. I really think I just crushed it with the speaker. Uh, so anyway, that's all I've got. Links in the description if you want more information, more videos, etc. Otherwise, I'll catch you all next time, and uh, thanks for sticking with me.